Hey, it's me. Like I'm back. Uh, <laughs> take your books and turn to 601. We're going to sing High Fly Away. Please stand up, 601. I just about pulled a Pastor Carl on you. Wait a minute, one more time. I know. I was going to say, let's do that just one more time. Yeah, that, that's, good. that's good singing this morning. We want to welcome you to Pine Grove Baptist Church. You see, Pastor Carl and Sister Nell are not, right, are not with us. Um, Pastor Carl is with his brother right now, and I think he's real sick, and we want to pray for them. Um, Remember the announcements in the bulletin that you have. Does somebody have a special announcement to make this morning? Somebody? Yes, we're going to when you get through. Oh, when I get through? Okay. All right. Do you have prayer requests this morning? Okay, thank you. And Barbara. Yeah. Oh. Old Jerry's out of commission today. Yeah. But he'll be back. <laughs> Won't be long. I hear your brother's coming next week to, to sing. Well, that's good. Oh, y'all know old Horace Wells, don't you? He, he's coming. He's coming to town. Look forward to hearing him and all of them singing together. If there's no other request, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, so good to be in your house this morning. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that we have to worship you, Lord. Pray for the prayer request this morning, and we just pray to minister to them, Lord. And we pray to you bless the shut-ins, Lord, who can't come and be with us today, Lord. Just lift them up in a mighty way. We pray for our service today, Lord. Pray, Lord, that you just be with us today and all the singing, praying, preaching, Lord, that, it, that would be all for your glory. And may you receive all the honor and glory for what we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Now. So we're going to do announcements. 
Uh, Brian and Caitlin's getting married on um, July the 23rd at 2 o'clock here at the church, and everyone's invited. Also, we got choir practice at 6 o'clock Wednesday night. We are learning new songs, so uh, if you can possibly come, that would be great. We have Bible study at 7. We're doing the soup kitchen July the 27th. Um, and we're at the soup kitchen with her for what, 11 to, 11 to 2. It's the one in hand, it's the one that we're doing. And then we'll have a youth meeting on July the 28th here at the church at what time? 5.30 to 7 a.m.? 5.30 to 7. Yeah. We're going to end at 7. We'll leave it. We'll leave it that time. those who have prayed, from those who have sent stuff, from all the workers and all the kids. Thank you for all the hard work that you did yesterday. It really, beyond my wildest dreams of, of what it was going to turn out to me, and like I said on my Facebook page, I shouldn't have even doubted anything because we know God's in control. But we had probably already heard 28 kids yesterday. Two black and half. We had 12 to get saved yeah. yesterday. And we need to remember those kids that, that made a profession of faith because they need someone in behind them. Um, we don't know that maybe they can be an influence to their family, their parents, whoever takes care of them, brothers, sisters, whatever. And just pray for those kids from yesterday. But I, I from the bottom of my heart, I just want to thank everybody for all you did. You don't make like this as Thank you. Let me ask you to do this part of it. For Vacation Bible School, we've done something a little bit different this year. We had rooms, and in each room we had a character in the Bible. So um, I had a room, Noah, and Mr. Piper was Noah. And I'm going to tell you what, he come in there with saw horses and everything, and he was showing the children how Noah built the ark. And then we told him about Noah, told him about the ark, and all of them seemed so interested in it. And then they went to Moses' room. Randy, can you tell me anything about Moses' room? Billy was Moses. Billy was Moses. Now, we Billy got a burning bush. Oh, oh, oh. That kind of looked like a great flock, but we put lights on So, um... Ten <laughs> Yeah, we had two tombstones that looked like Ten Commandments. But anyway, Preacher Carl stood outside the door, and he talked through the burning bush. And, um, Billy was Moses. And I think that I did a lot for the children. And then we had uh, Jonah. Joshua. Joshua. You did Jonah, didn't you? I did. Jonah. <laughs> okay, then we had Joshua. Billy had Joshua. And I think Billy did that too. But it, was it told the whole story of Joshua. The teachers in there told the kids about Joshua. <clears throat> Luann gave him horns because Luann does not have children. <laughs> so. We listened to horns blowing. From then on, we had horns. But they did get a lesson out of it. I've never heard adults call my name so much as they did yesterday. <laughs> but you get the horns. And they weren't white horns, okay? They were loud horns. And then we had Jones. <coughs> right? No. That was you. You want to say something about that? Do you? Okay, <coughs> then we had Jones. And Luann got this great old big whale. Big whale. We call it whale. Big whale. And so we put that in the room. Robbie blew it up. And we put that in the room. And so Mr. Uh, Smith <coughs> was joking. And uh, the kids, I think, learned something out of every classroom. And I thought it turned out to be a very good Bible school, a vacation Bible school. They asked questions. And they were really interested. But the funniest thing to me was the whale, Willie, I gave it to Amy because she got a swimming pool. So I said, Amy, go upstairs and get Willie. 
<laughs> she come down the steps and was trying to get through the door in the fellowship hall, and you couldn't even see Amy. All you could see was Willie coming through the wall. And finally, I could see Amy's feet. And when she got in there, she grabbed Willie. And, and she, she, Willie was so much bigger than her. It was so funny. That was the funniest thing to everything. But we did, we had a lot of people. That's why they're not here today, because they're exhausted. We had a lot of people that helped us. We had kitchen staff. We fed them. They gave them snack bags. Then we fed them hot dogs. Everybody worked together. And it was a wonderful vacation Bible school. So that's what we want to job is Okay, let's see what we're doing now. <laughs> we're going to do fire special. <laughs>
Okay, take your hymn books and let's stand and sing 237. I stand amazed in the presence. singing this morning I have not sang in years my mom and I used to sing it together and I really miss singing with her but um my voice isn't what it used to be either but on the chorus you guys all know this song I would love for you to sing it with me Presence, 
be found If you have a need I know that He has the answer You just reach out and claim a child You are standing on holy ground good to be in his presence isn't it? Amen. and he's with us today we thank him for that thank you Jenny it's always good to hear you sing it's good to have a daughter that will stand up for the Lord and sing I didn't teach her everything she knows I'm not going to take take that but um, she's just like me amen amen <laughs> If you have your Bibles ready, um, turn to Matthew chapter 24, verse 44. Matthew 24, verse 44. And let's all stand for the reading of God's word this morning. And these are the words of Jesus. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not... The Son of Man cometh. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time together. We thank you for your presence. And now, Father, I pray that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit as I preach your word, Lord. May it be your words and not mine. Pray, Lord, the words would go forth and that you would use them as you see fit, Lord, to use them. Lord, we look forward to this event I'm getting ready to preach about, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that the people today, each and every one, will be ready when it takes place. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. I am an aviation nut. And Randy is too. He loves aviation. We, we talk about airplanes. I love jet noise. I love propeller noise. I love going to air shows. I have had several flight simulators. But I never learned to fly. But one day I'm going to fly. One day we're all going to fly. And we're going to have the master pilot at the helm. His name's Jesus Christ. 
Today I dropped by just to talk to you for a few minutes about the rapture of the church. Now, Pastor Carl has done that on several occasions and he um, talked about it some last week. But I come to preach to you about it today. And I hope everybody will be ready. In verse 3 of chapter 24, the disciples came to the Lord when they and asked him when they could expect the end of the world to come. Now, I encourage you to take your Bibles when you get home or sometimes this week and read Oliver chapter 24 in your spare time. In verse 3, the disciples came to Jesus and Tell us when shall these things be and when shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? They wanted to know. And in verses 4 through 35, Jesus tells them of the many things that will transpire in the last days. Then in verses 36 to 51, Jesus makes a plea for men to be ready to meet him when he does come. Now the second coming of Christ, I want to let you know, is in two parts. Part one is an event that we have come to be called the rapture. At this time, Jesus will come and will receive, and for he will come and call all those who have received him as Savior to come to him to heaven. At this time, he will raise those believers who have already died and he will take those who are living on to heaven to be with him forever. Amen. 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 And and that's going to be a glorious time when he comes. Now, part two, the second coming of Christ will take place seven years after the tribulation. And we'll talk about the tribulation just a little bit. But this event will see the return of Jesus in glory and in power. He will ascend upon the world and will defeat all of his enemies and he will establish his kingdom upon earth and he will rule and reign for 1,000 years. And we're going to be right here with him. Now these two events, none, neither can say can be said to be more important than the other. However, to those of us who are alive this morning, the rapture is of the most importance. It's important today. Why? Because it is the next next event on the prophetic calendar of God. And brothers and sisters, I want to tell you this morning, it will happen. It will happen. In fact, it could happen tomorrow or at any time. Therefore, it is imperative that people understand the great need of being ready to meet the Lord when he comes. He says, be ye therefore ready because in such an hour when you think not, the Son of Man cometh. When you don't think about it, when you're not thinking about it, he could come. But my desire this morning is to tell you what the Bible teaches us about this event known as the rapture. And in doing so, I hope to show you the importance of being ready to meet the Lord Jesus. Because just as sure as you're sitting here, he will come. He will return. Now let's look at a few minutes at this matter of the rapture and talk for a while about the need to get ready to fly. Y'all get, is anybody here who has never flown before? Anybody here has never been in an airplane and flown before? Well, brother, you going to fly one of these days. You're going to fly, Jamie. You can get out of that old chair and you're going to fly away just with the rest of us. Amen. But we all need to get ready to fly. Let me tell you four S's about the rapture. Number one, the rapture will be sudden. It will be sudden. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52 says, Behold, I show you mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment 
in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we will be changed. The rapture will take place all of a sudden like when we're not expecting it. The Bible says in the twinkling of an eye. Now, I can look at y'all and see people blinking today. Now the blink of an eye is one fiftieth of, of, of a second. But the twinkling of an eye is faster than that. Fast as you can blink your eyes, the Lord is going to come in the cloud and he's going to receive us up. That's pretty quick, isn't it? We won't know what hit us. When we get up there, we'll know what hit us. People down on earth won't know what's happened. They'll be talking to somebody and lo and behold, look around. They'll be gone. That's how fast it's going to take place. There will be absolutely no time to prepare. Even a, a person will either be ready in an instant to go or they won't be ready to go. But the Bible is clear in its teaching that we cannot count on count on there to be another day in which to get ready. Brothers and sisters, it may come today. It may come tomorrow. But I'm telling you here, I'm keeping telling you all over again, the rapture is coming. And I don't think it's going to be long, do you? Proverbs 27, verse 1, Boast not thyself for tomorrow, for we know it's not what a day may bring forth. 2 Corinthians 6, 2, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Friend, if you're not saved today, I encourage you with all my heart to get saved today. If you're here today and you're not sure about your salvation, be sure before you leave this place today. Because as soon as you walk out this door and go home, the rapture may come and you won't be ready. Because it's coming all of a sudden. Like there will be no announcements made. There will be no advertisements posted. The Lord will come and go and come and go for his church in a split second of time. Right now is the only time you may have. The only time you are in guaranteed is right now. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is promised to no one. So get ready today. The rapture will be sudden. Also, the rapture will be solemn. It will be solemn because all those who do not know the Lord Jesus will be left behind. A lot of people are carrying on today. A lot of people are making fun of Jesus. They're making fun of the church. They laugh at the church. They make jokes about the church, about God's people. But I want to tell you what, one day they won't be laughing. They won't be laughing. They won't be making fun. They're going to see all them jokes that they were making well, for naught. Because one day, they may, one day when Jesus comes back, they will be left behind. In Luke chapter 17, you've read this before, 34 through 36, it says, there will be two men. One will be taken and the other left. There will be two women grinding, one taken and the other left. After the rapture, there will be many who will be, look for the missing loved ones, but they will never find them and they will never see them again. There will be mothers who will be separated from their children, husbands from their wives. Let me tell you, I've been, I've been thinking about this week and I thought about what's going to happen to the little children. I believe all, all the children, we sing Jesus loves the little children of the world. He does love the little children. And I think about all those children who are, have been abused. They're, they're hungry. They're, they're, they're without a parent that, that cares for them. I believe when the rapture comes, they're going to go home to be with Jesus. They, they, they're going to laugh. They're going to play. They're going to have a good time over there. They have some good playmates to play with. 
Lord's going to take the children home. And then these, the, these parents who have neglected their children, put them aside just trying to give them something to entertain them. They, they don't have anything to do with them. Those who have abused those children, they're going to look around. Them children are going to be gone one of these days. They're going to say, where's my children? They're going to a good place. That's where they're going to go. And I think about, I think about those wives who have begged their husbands, begged them, begged them to come to church to be saved, and they won't be saved one day. That wife's going to be gone. One day that husband will be gone. And they'll know that it is so because of what they told them. It will be a solemn time because the rapture will signal the beginning of the great tribulation. The great tribulation will start as soon as the rapture comes and all of God's children are taken away. That's when the great tribulation will come. What is the great tribulation? It is a seven year period like the world has never seen before. I don't want, I'm not going to be in there. I hope that you won't go through the tribulations. Brothers and sisters, if you got into lost people and friends or loved ones, you witness to them because you don't want them to go through the great tribulation. It's going to be a terrible time. Let me tell you some things that's going to happen during that time after the Lord takes us home. There will be natural disasters. There will be great earthquakes and darkness. Stars will fall out of the sky. Mountains and islands will move. The ocean will become blood and the water will become poison. There will be disease, war, devastation, hunger. There's going to be insects that will bite you continuously. And I read where there will be hailstones that will be at least 100 pounds falling upon the earth. I don't want to go through anything like that, do you? And during the Great Tribulation... There's a man that's going to come on the scene and they call him the Antichrist because he wants to be like Christ, but he is a devil. He is of the devil. He's just like the devil and he's against Christ. He's going to come on the scene and he's going to be the best thing, like to say, like since sliced bread. People's going to love him. People's going to take to him. But in the end, he's going to betray the people. And I understand that a loaf of bread during that time will be a day's wages. Stuff is going to be so expensive. Brothers and sisters, I encourage you, don't go through that great tribulation. Be called up when the rapture comes. Also, it will be a shocking time. The rapture will be shocking because many who expect to go with the redeemed, many will ex expect to go to redeem, but be, will be left behind instead. Many who think that they are going will not go. And I believe many who don't know they're going, they'll go too. They'll go. But look over here in Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 to 23. Jesus said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. I was wondering what why I was dragging. I was that, that cord and I thought my pants legs was too long or so. I'm all right. Many were saying to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and thy name done many wonderful things. And then I was professing to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Not everybody who thinks that they're going to heaven is going to heaven. That's a solemn, that is a shocking thing, isn't it? Many have false hope for heaven. But do not be deceived. God knows your heart. God knows your heart today. Listen, I talk to people sometimes. I think I'm saved. I reckon I am. 
I reckon I'm going to heaven. There's no reckoning about it, brothers and sisters. You either know that you're going or don't know. You got to be sure that you're going to heaven when you die or you're going to be raptured up when the rapture comes. It will be a shocking time. There's only one way of salvation this morning. John 3, 3 says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So if you're not born again through Jesus Christ, through his shed blood, accept him and be saved this morning and be ready to meet him. The rapture will be shocking. It will be sudden. It will be solemn. But I like this good part. The rapture is going to be satisfying. We can all smile now. The old rapture is going to be satisfying when it comes, when the Lord takes us. We're going to be satisfied people. Why? Because there will be a glad reunion at that time. There will be a glad reunion. All the people that we have seen, that we have known, who have gone on before us, hallelujah, we're going to see them again. There's going to be a great reunion. Listen over here. Let, let me read this scripture to you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 through 18. But I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, which have gone before us, that you sorrow not even as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them... Also, which sleep, sleep in Jesus will God bring with them. So he's going to take those who have died. He's going to take that body. He's going to call that body up to be with them. He's not going to leave anything behind that belongs to him. For this was saying to you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Now here's how it's going to take place. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So that tells me that we're all going to be together. They're all going to be together. You remember reading where Jesus was gathered with his disciples and, and when he spoke his final words, he was taken up. He was taken up to heaven. And that angel told his disciples, why are you standing gazing? Why are you standing looking up? That same Jesus who just ascended He's going to come back one day. He said he's going to come back in the same way that he left. That's the way the rapture is going to take place. Over in heaven, we're going to see loved ones, saints of old. But praise God, we're going to see Jesus one day. We're going to get to see him. Our heavenly father will also be there. There will be an eternal blessing. There will only be good things there. There's some bad things upon this earth, isn't there? But we're going to a place where there's only good. There will be a new body. There will be no more disease, no more death, no more aging. I had a church member over in Edenton. He always said, preacher, he says, getting old is not for old folks. Getting old is not for senior citizens. But the older I get, I know what it means. But I want to tell you what, one day that aging process will be over. We won't get old. I, I love that old song. Y'all probably know it. I, won't, I, I might sing it one day. A land where we'll never grow old. Never grow old. We're going to be there in that land. We would never grow old. One thing I like about it, we're going to be, when we're raptured up, we're going to our new home. 
We're going to our new home. We're just pilgrims here this morning. But one day, we will go to live together in heaven. Streets of gold. <coughs> Excuse me. No night. No sin. No curse. Nothing but glory forever. And it is satisfying to know that I have made things right with him. And I'm going there. And I hope that you are too. I hope that you are too. Well, it's all those things. One more S. It's going to be a sad time. It's sad now when you think about it. We we was happy on one side, but it's sad on the other side. The rapture will take place. Why? It's because people that we know who are not saved, we will never see them again. It may be a loved one that you know is not saved. You raptured out, you'll never see them again. If you're here today and you're not saved and the rapture comes, we'll never see you again. That sure is sad. You may not have another opportunity to be saved. It is a sad, sad thing. But praise God, we are living in the day of grace. We're still living in the day of grace Today, you can be made right. You can be made ready. All you have to do is come to Jesus by faith and he will save your soul. Jesus said in John 6, 37, he said, And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Tell your friends that. Some of your friends say, I'm so messed up. I'm so bad. Jesus will never have me say you're mistaken about that. Because he said, whoever comes to me, I will in no wise turn them away. I will not cast them out. Brothers and sisters, I look forward to the rapture. Sometimes you think about it, it, it you know, you don't know how it's going to take place. You don't, you know when it's going to be. But there will be a time of freedom for me. I will leave this old world with this problem of sin and death. And I'm going to ascend to heaven where I will joy, enjoy the presence of the Lord and the saints forever. And you will too. Question is, what will happen to you? If Jesus came right now, would you go with him or would you left behind? If there's any slightest doubt in your mind, any, please come today as we have a hymn of invitation. You may have a loved one or friend who's not rapture ready. Pray for them today. Come and get ready to fly with me. Because we're going home, brothers and sisters. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time together. We thank you, Lord, that we hear about the rapture, Lord. We know that it's coming one day. We know we don't think about it. But Lord, I just pray that everybody will be ready. Our loved ones and friends will be ready. Maybe there's somebody in this church who needs to get ready today by accepting Jesus Christ. Lord, now take this hymn of invitation, this invitation time. I pray to your Holy Spirit. We move all over this church, Lord. And people will move according to your will. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you will take <clears throat> take your handbooks and turn.